Uh, first of all, our Pledge of Allegiance, which we say every day, we pledge allegiance to the Republic for which we stand, right? The, the flag and the Republic for which we stand. When, when Benjamin Franklin, after our, uh, our Constitution was ratified, he talked about giving us a Republic if we can keep it. And I think people should analyze those two little quotes and wonder why there were references to a public in both of them uh, in, in any event. It Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I'm about to yield to uh, my friend, Ms. Meng from New York, but I'm inspired by the remarks of the gentleman from Wisconsin, especially about the word republic, which of course comes from race publica, the public thing. Um, he happened upon a subject that's of a lot of interest to me because I wrote a paper about it when I was in sixth grade, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, it was written by a, a radical Baptist minister named Francis Bellamy. I'm not sure if the gentleman's aware of that on the 400th anniversary of Columbus's arrival in the New World. And, for, and Reverend Bellamy, who was a, an abolitionist in Vermont, was concerned about the continuing salute of the Confederate battle flag in the southern states. And so he wanted to write a, a flag salute that would be unifying for the Union. And he wrote, I pledge allegiance to my flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, with liberty and justice for all. And you notice what is not in there. He did not have under God. That was added in 1954 by Congress, several weeks after the Supreme Court's decision in Brown versus Board of Education. But in any event, I'm not quite sure what the relevance is of the gentleman's invocation of the Republic or of Ben Franklin and uh, the, the famous vignette about him saying, uh, if you can keep it, Ben Franklin, um, was of course a, a big supporter of immigration to the country, although he did display an anti-German bias in some of uh, his writings. But uh, I'll tell you a little story about Ben Franklin that might be uh, of relevance to what the gentleman's talking about. Apparently, because uh, I just did a tour in Philadelphia with the Ben Franklin people up there, and uh, we learned this wonderful story. He made a loan to a friend of his for $100, um, and then he, uh, he recorded in his diary that this gentleman he made a loan to for $100, Josiah, was always disappearing behind a tree or a building whenever Ben came along. And he finally caught up with them and he said, Josiah, you know, I, I loaned you 100 bucks, and I'm wondering, uh, am I going to be able to get my, my principal back or at least the interest? And Josiah said, well, Ben, look, the $100 is well invested somewhere else. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And Franklin said, well, what about the interest? He said, well, I forgot to tell you that um, it's against my religion to pay interest, so I can't pay you the interest. So Franklin said, you mean to tell me it's against your principle to pay me the interest, and it's against your interest to pay me the principle? And Josiah said, well, that's right. So Franklin said, well, I can see I'm not going to get either. Well, look, here our principles and our interests converge very much. The principles are set forth in the Constitution which is we count everybody, and everybody is part of the census, and everybody is part of the reapportionment process. It's been like that since 1790. We don't need to start finger painting on the Constitution with this uh, silly election year proposal. But it's also in our interests, because as my colleagues have said, uh, this is a land that is built on immigration, except for the Native Americans who are already here and the people who were brought over as slaves all of us are the descendants of immigrants to this country. Tom Paine said when he got to America in 1774, two years before the revolution, he said, this land, if it lives up to its principles, will become an asylum to humanity. Not an insane asylum, mind you. An asylum to humanity, a place of refuge for people seeking freedom from religious, political, and economic oppression. That's who we are. 